Hey guys, welcome back to Henry's Technical Tutoring and an another video in the Web Browsing Safely series. In this video, we'll take a quick look at the network and firewall configurations that I'm using for the kids' computers to ensure they have to use the E2Guardian proxy and the Pi-hole DNS blocking services that I've set up. This is just to give you some ideas of how you can ensure compliance and be confident your kids are well protected from harmful content on the internet. My kids are still not at the point where I believe they'll learn how to bypass the proxy settings in their web browsers, but they could always surprise me, so I'm making sure that can't happen. Let's start by reviewing a quick network diagram that shows what's going on in my setup here. So over on the left, we can see there's two clients, and those are linking up to the Fortinet AP, which is actually an AP from Fortinet and a Fortigate 50E that's controlling the AP. And that's providing access via this HKNet SSID on VLAN 80, which rides over the switching infrastructure here to connect in ultimately to the PFSense firewall slash router. This then provides gateway access to the internet, as well as also access into the E2 Guardian and the Pi Hole services that run on separate VMs inside of a management network that's at my desk. So if we take a look over here now at the access point itself, or well, the FortiGate itself rather. So the FortiGate has the AP linked up to it by its own little CAPWAP connection. It has a number of different uh, SS, uh, of SSIDs listening. And if we looked at any of those SSIDs, specifically the one that we're talking about, we have HKNet, which is a local bridge and inside of its configuration, we've simply set the optional VLAN ID to 80. Now, as long as we've configured in our network interfaces, the appropriate VLAN interface that also corresponds to that VLAN ID, then traffic will flow freely from the AP via the CAPWAP link back into the FortiGate, and then from the FortiGate, it will be passed on to the VLAN 80 interface and into the network uh, as a frame. So that's great. Now on our firewall configuration, just a quick little review, we have the interface, KidsNet, which is bound up to a EM4 interface that's assigned to VLAN 80 and it has the default gateway IP address defined. There's DHCP configuration going on here that's providing uh, DHCP services to this VLAN and, and ensuring that uh, the DNS server of the Pi hole is passed out as part of the DHCP options, as well as the gateway. Uh, of course, being the IP address that the PFSense box occupies on that VLAN. So this ensures that any traffic generated from the uh, kids' machines will always home in on this, on this PFSense router slash firewall combination to gain access to the internet. And then over here we have some rules that are defined. And this is where the actual control is taking place. So we're, we, we obviously these are executed in, in a top to bottom order. So the first rule is basically providing access to the proxy host. This is ensuring that our traffic will be able to enter the E2 Guardian proxy and be forwarded on. Then in case this proxy is you know removed from the web browser configuration on their clients, these rules will kick in and deny any direct access to the internet via port 80 and port 443 for HTTP and HTTPS respectively. So, oops. So the uh, next rule we have here is the DNS allow rule. This is allowing DNS traffic to enter into our Pi hole server and be processed by it. The the following rule afterwards then blocks any other DNS traffic. So we can't have a situation where the kids' computers could use a different resolver for other services. Keep in mind that for the E2 Guardian service, anything going here, E2 Guardian host is going to do the lookup itself, but it likewise is configured to use the same DNS server. So it will be subject to the same blocking rules that uh, any direct lookups uh, w would be if they were done to that Pi hole device from these machines. So next we have a block rule that denies access to other VLANs in my network here. So that's just to protect the other machines and keep this network isolated. And then we have a, a default allow all rule here that allows all outbound traffic to the internet. So anything that doesn't go through the proxy, uh, which should, should be pretty rare because 
all they're really using anyways is, is the actual web browsers on these machines. I haven't installed anything else for them. Would go out via this and still be subject to the same DNS restrictions on the Pi hole. And finally, there's this little, there's an inbound ICMP allow rule for me to use if I need to, tr to help them troubleshoot anything and, uh, well, to troubleshoot why maybe they, they don't have access and make sure I can just ping their hosts. Uh, yeah, so that's sort of how that is done. To give you a quick example of what's going on on the machine, I have set up a uh, little test VM that's on that network. And as you can see, we can search for things like normal fun stuff, cartoons work just fine. Uh, if we actually go to YouTube right now, YouTube is actually blocked by an E2 Guardian time-based rule. So if I was to click on this, I'm going to get a deny message saying that I can't look at that right now. It doesn't really say why, but that's okay. Uh, basically, this is very similar to the rule that I had shown in my previous video where I was doing time-based blocking of different sites. And this is just uh, set up to block, I believe, from 5 p.m. to uh, 7.30 p.m., uh, if I recall correctly. Anyways, one thing that I did do as well, is, and this was on the PFSIMS box, was to set up schedules. So if I edit these rules, I have a schedule that I had applied, which I took off temporarily for the demonstration there quickly. And I have applied this daytime kids schedule. So if I save that setting and do something similar here for this one as well, set this one also to deny traffic or if it's outside of a certain window. All this is doing is setting a time when the rule will be active. As you can see, it's a, it's a yellow button right now, which means the rule is currently not active. So once we apply these changes and go back to our go back to our little client machine there, we should be unable to access anything. And this is how I just make sure that if you know they were to grab a laptop at nighttime and try and use it, that it wouldn't even work. So uh, like that Ubuntu machine there, I've set them up with some Linux laptops because you know go Linux, why not? And uh, that's what they use. So this is just to show you the uh, range information on the rule. We can edit this rule and we can change it and we can add or remove different times if we want to, you know, get a little more granular with what, with what we want to do. Like, you know, make sure it doesn't work during lunch hour, for instance. Although that's not really been a problem yet. So anyway, so if we apply this change here and go back over to our client machine and we try to do a refresh, we should notice that it will basically time out, which is what we were going for. So, um, yeah, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and click that wonderful bell so you can see more. Also, please comment below if you have any questions or want clarification on what I've done with my network and firewall configuration, or if you have suggestions for anything you'd like to see in future videos. The Pi Hole DNS blocking video is coming next and will likely be the last in this video series where I will go over how to set up the Pi Hole service and uh, configure some custom block lists. Anyways, I uh, hope you have a good one and uh, see you next time.